welcome to DC Today. David Bonson is in none other than Austin, Texas today. He's going to be speaking at an event um, sponsored by, what is it, the University of Texas Law School. Um, so he'll be there today um, and speaking, I believe, tomorrow. Uh, he'll be back tomorrow with the Long Form Dividend Cafe. Uh, markets were interesting today. Um, if you watch, markets started out strong. Um, and if you go to the written, you'll see uh, it was basically just a mountain downhill. Uh, nothing meaningful to the downside, um, but all the gains we opened with were absolutely given away. So the Dow Jones was down 248 points. Uh, that relates to being down 0.73%. S&P was down 0.88%, and the NASDAQ was down 1.02%. The 10-year Treasury didn't move a ton, two basis points. Uh, it went up to 3.66%. You will note, though, that that rate is a bit higher, right? We saw the 10-year Treasury floating for the last couple of weeks around 3.5%. Um, some of the talks you heard yesterday from Fed representatives seeming a little bit more hawkish on what they might need to do with the, the Federal Reserve rate, and uh, you're starting to see the impact that has on short-term rates, and then a little bit of a nudge it has on kind of that 10-year Treasury. Uh, the top performing sector today was consumer discretionaries. They were negative, so every sector was down today. Consumer discretionaries were down about 0.2%, um, while uh, communication services were down 2.8%. So fairly widespread from the best and worst, um, but all were negative. Uh, oil was also down today about 1.06%. Oil is now at $77.64 a barrel. I wish I had a lot of economic news to talk to you about today. Um, Absolutely. Actually, I, I wish I could talk to you about NBA basketball and all the things that happened uh, at the trade deadline. But I am guessing that 90% of the people that listen to this are not interested in NBA basketball like I am. Uh, hopefully, a lot of you will celebrate Sunday with some friends uh, watching the Super Bowl. Should be a good game between the Eagles and Chiefs. One economic data point we did get today, we got the jobless claims, uh, but nothing really exciting. Jobless claims came in at 196,000. That was on an estimate of 190,000. I filled in for David a couple times on Thursday, so I'm usually talking about jobless claims. This broke a six week trend um, where those jobless claims were going down, but it's nothing meaningful. Uh, it's still representing a very strong and robust uh, labor market. One thing you'll hear uh, some pundits saying is that um, you're hearing a lot of announcements of job cuts from uh, pretty large technology companies and uh, those aren't really captured in the numbers yet, or at least that's kind of what's said um, because, you know, announcing a 20% cut or 5,000 jobs or things like that, uh, it's not always immediate uh, and you don't see those jobless claims uh, spark up uh, right away. Um, other than that, I think a lot of the focus from the news feed today was on a few of the Fed speakers yesterday, right? Um, they spoke uh, and today was a kind of digesting of what they meant. It's kind of interesting. I don't know the exact date, but I'm thinking back. I, I believe it was something like December of 2018 um, where the Fed president, Jerome Powell, capitulated, right? They were trying to raise interest rates. Uh, markets weren't participating. Uh, things got a little bit ugly. And then they kind of backed off on raising rates. I think from that experience, uh, market participants lost confidence in the Fed actually doing what they said they were going to do. Um, through the hikes of last year, I think people are starting to believe uh, that their posture is the forecast of how they're going to behave. So yesterday, when you got some more hawkish feelings about the fact that inflation is coming down, but the job market being very strong, remember the Fed having that dual mandate, two parts, right? Stable prices and uh, strong employment. So since they continue to feel that the employment's very, very strong, um, they're turning their eyes towards hey, can we, um, and everybody's talking about soft landing, can we continue to gently push up that federal funds rate? So you saw it go from 75 basis point hikes to 50 basis point hikes. Uh, now this most recent hike was 25 basis points. And what the market really wants to know is when will they stop, right? Over the last decade or so, um, the inflation has sat below 2%. So this hasn't been a problem. But we've also seen uh, it's been a speculative decade, right? We saw multiples come out pretty strong and uh, higher interest rates have been the most damaging to some of those high duration type stocks. Um, who knows how it all play out? 
I'll, I'll end with this. Um, we didn't have an Ask David today, so we instead had an Ask Trevor. Uh, and the question I, I put in there came from a client, and they were basically saying they couldn't think of a, a narrative um, that would be believable for why stocks should go up from here. Uh, and, and he was basically saying, hey, if, if earnings are going to have a strong headwind uh, and if higher rates are going to compress multiples, what in the world could cause stocks to go up from here? And, and, and if, I'm, if I'm right in the way that I say that, shouldn't I sell my stocks and buy you know, a one-year treasury or six-month treasury, which are you know, nearing that 5% mark? Uh, and, and I unpacked it uh, in the article, but I'll, I'll kind of try to do it here on the video as well. What I was trying to tell him is that from my framing, when it comes to building a portfolio, and, and I don't want to be stubborn in this, but this is absolutely how I see it. I take every dollar and I place it into one of two categories. Either that dollar is earmarked to be sent, spent in the, the near-term future, or it's acting as reserves, emergency funds, or whatnot. Um, or that dollar is set aside to grow and to compound and to accumulate wealth over time. Those two different buckets, the, that, that bifurcation of money, there's two very different investments, right? If something is short term, you need a guaranteed rate. Um, you need to make sure that if you're funding college or a wedding or whatnot, that the money is worth the same value. So you'll take a lower fixed interest rate. On the other side, stocks and real estate and things of that nature can be appropriate. The problem I see with this question is I, I see it as an apples and oranges question. You're trying to take short-term investments and place them into long-term money and, and vice versa. And what I've said there is that is just another form of market timing. And I say it in kind of in jest, but if it, if it walks like market timing and it talks like market timing, um, you can just count me out. Uh, in all the years I've worked in this industry, I personally have never been successful at trying to time markets. Haven't found it that I can do it consistently. Haven't found that I can do it profitably. On top of that, I've never met anybody that can. So my advice is simply, if it looks like it's market timing, you're going to have to fight that urge to try to create a hypothesis that you want to invest and um, basically take action on the narrative you think that'll play out. So my encouragement is really talk to your advisor, look at your financial plan and see what makes most sense for your short-term money and your long-term money, but don't mix the two. So um, with that said, like I mentioned, David will be back tomorrow with uh, his long-form dividend cafe. So you'll enjoy that. So you got the Super Bowl on Sunday. Uh, you know, Brian Zaitel filled in yesterday and he called the Eagles for the win. I'll be rooting against the Eagles. So uh, sorry for all my fans. I'm just a big um, Patrick Mahomes fan. So really like watching him play. Um, and that is all I have for you today. So until next time, friends. Mm -hmm.